Philosophy is dead, wrote Stephen Hawking in the book The Grand Design. Has modern science made so much progress toward our understanding of the universe that we no longer need philosophy? Many members in academia believe philosophy has become little more than a superfluous, outdated method of understanding. This short video will provide an answer to the question, has science replaced philosophy? Now, science, in a way, is a sub-branch of philosophy, but when people ask this question, I think they mean two things. Number one, science is the only means of obtaining true knowledge about the universe. And number two, science alone can ultimately tell us everything about the universe. These statements are part of a philosophical position sometimes referred to as scientism, that science holds all the answers and is all we need for thorough understanding. First, before examining if both these statements are correct, let's clearly define what science and philosophy are. Science is, number one, the entire body of definite empirical knowledge that we have about the universe. This includes cumulative results of every experiment, measurement, and observation that we have ever recorded, and number two, which we'll be focusing on most in this video, the process by which we investigate and learn more about the universe, which consists of systematic observation, measurement, and the formulation, testing, and modification of hypotheses. Philosophy comes from the Greek word meaning love of wisdom, and it's the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence, especially when considered as an academic discipline. Historically, philosophy encompassed all bodies of knowledge, but in the 19th century began to split into sub-branches of study, such as economics, science, psychology, sociology, and others. So philosophy came before science, which was formerly known as natural philosophy. Today, academic philosophy is divided into different branches of study, the main ones being metaphysics, or the study of what reality is, ethics, the study of morality and moral rules, logic, the systematic study of valid rules of inference, and epistemology, the study of what knowledge is and how we know things. So now that we've defined both, let's examine both the claims made at the start to see if they're true. Let's look at the first one. There was a philosophical movement in the early 20th century led by A.J. Ayer and those in the Vienna Circle School of Thought called logical positivism that essentially believed just that, that only statements verifiable through direct observation or logical proof are meaningful. Despite early popularity, positivism was unanimously rejected in philosophy because the claim only science can provide objective knowledge about the natural world is self-refuting. After all, that claim is a truth about the world that was not discovered by science. Ayer himself stated the most important defect of logical positivism was nearly all of it was false. At the heart of this contradiction is the idea of rational knowledge versus empirical knowledge. Science only provides us with empirical knowledge or knowledge obtained by experience. For example, it was raining outside two days this week. It does not give us rational knowledge or knowledge gained through reason or acquired by logical argument. Philosophy uses the necessary tools of logic and reason to build guesses on how the world works and what reality is on top of empirical knowledge from scientific study. Now, why is this important? Well, here's a simple example. Take dinosaur fossils. We have data suggesting various fossils existed at different dates all around the world but no empirical knowledge of a dinosaur ever existing. Philosophy comes in and allows us to create the idea that a species of animal existed long ago called dinosaurs. Science can't do that. It just gives us data and records about fossils, not that dinosaurs actually ever existed. Even the staunchest of empiricists, like Hawking was, still use some degree of philosophy and metaphysics in their work. As philosophy continues asking why questions where scientific study and data leave off. That shows statement two is most likely wrong as well. Also, it's important to understand that science is descriptive and not prescriptive. Science can give us statistics and data, but cannot tell us what to do with the data or the information from the study. That's where philosophy comes in again. For example, science cannot determine human values and morals, a part of philosophy called ethics. Empiricism cannot determine why we ought to act morally, nor why we ought to value human happiness over human misery. Science can give us empirical facts like X number of people died during the Holocaust, it doesn't say what society should do about that event or how to avoid similar situations from happening in the future, something I think we all agree is pretty important. We can make prescriptive claims objectively as well as subjectively, like how each of us as individuals should act morally, and what makes life worth living for us as individuals. No matter how much data science obtains about each of us, it probably can't tell us everything we ought to do to feel uh, fulfilled and have a high state of well-being. Science can certainly give suggestions as what we should do given the current state of our being. Now imagine an advanced Apple Watch telling you what action to do next 
to feel happiness based on its analysis of your body and history. This would only work in theory as there has to be some subjective element to living, the idea that we got to live our own lives and make our own decisions, even if some of those decisions were bad ones. Now, in conclusion, science gives us empirical data, while philosophy goes further, figuring out what is true, what is real, what is moral, what it means to live a life worthwhile, and more. So is philosophy dead? Well, no, not at all, and it's more important than ever, perhaps. So let me know what you think and how much you think science should influence us and dictate our lives. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe using the link below in the description and turn on the notification bell to receive updates when new videos are out. Thanks for watching.